Good morning and welcome to the Gonzales Church of Christ live stream. We will begin our worship service uh, promptly after our uh, announcements this morning. Uh, normally, we would take opportunity during our uh, regular announcements to encourage those who are visiting with us to fill out a visitor card. Well, if you're visiting with us on our live stream this morning, you can't fill out a visitor card, but you can go over to our website, uh, gonzalezcofc.com, and there you can find all of our contact information. There's even a form where you can send in questions uh, or just comments. So I'd encourage you to just let us know that you're, you're watching and uh if there's anything that we can do for you. I'm going to start us off this morning with a scripture reading from Psalm 10, beginning at verse 16. Psalm 10, 16. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations perish from his, his land. O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You strength, will strengthen the, their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed so that man who is of the earth may strike terror no more. It is so good to be here today to worship our God, and I am looking forward to the day uh, that is next Sunday when we can actually get back to gathering some of us together in the building together. It will be extremely difficult not to shake hands and, and to hug but we will do our very best. I want to remind everyone to bring a mask and uh, make sure you're washing your hands frequently. We will be cleaning the building between services, and if you'd like to volunteer to help with that, to sanitize the building before or after the, the morning service, we'd appreciate that. Our order of service this Sunday will be today at 10, and then again, uh, we will have Bible class streamed uh, at 6 p.m. Now, uh, then we will have our Bible class on Wednesday at 5 p.m. And uh, Brother Darren Kyle will be teaching from the book of Ruth. Now, uh, a reminder also that tonight at 9 p.m. and Wednesday at 9 p.m. is the teenage class. Next Sunday, May 17th, we will begin meeting again in the building, uh, but the elders have thought it wise to split the congregation into two groups, so we will be meeting one group at 10 and one group at 1 p.m., all right? And if you have not yet texted Brother Mike or called him to let him know which service you would prefer to attend, please do so. Uh, those groups are about even now. There may be a few more in the morning, uh, but uh, those groups are coming along nicely. So let Brother Mike know uh, which of those two groups you plan to be a, a part of. And we will have, uh, like I said, 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock services here at the building. The Bible class will be streamed only at 6 p.m. Sunday night, as we've become accustomed to here lately. And then we will stream Wednesday night Bible class as well. And I believe that will be the schedule for the next two weeks. Uh, and we will be updated after that. All right, so don't forget, text or call Brother Mike and let him know he's keeping track of that list. Now, our prayer request, I got a text this morning from Brian Cook who said that his brother got his, his CT scan done and the results back and that the cancer is isolated to his hip. So they're very thankful for that, thankful for the prayers. Please continue to pray for him. This is the same place that he had the cancer last time, so he'll go through the, a similar treatment and plan for that. Let's remember the Allen family. This is Nancy Mars' father that passed away last week. Let's remember him. Also, Chris requested uh, prayers last week. Let's remember him. Uh, Sister Erica Babin has a cousin, Alex LeBeau, who uh, had a, a newborn son, 
uh, but he was born premature or a little early, so let's remember them in our prayers. <clears throat> and Patrick's sister, Stacy Causey, will be having surgery. And then also Taylor Babin, we want to remember her grandparents. Both of them uh, have COVID-19, and we want to remember them in our prayers. Uh, let's remember also uh, the, the Youth Day, the Ladies' Day, and the Family Day were all supposed to be in May. They've all been canceled at this point. Um, also, the summer camp, uh, Indian Creek Youth Camp, ICYC, has canceled their June weeks. Their July weeks are the only weeks that are still open. I would imagine that would mean those weeks are going to fill up uh, extraordinarily quickly. So please uh, go ahead. If you're planning on going to camp this summer, you need to go ahead and do that. I believe that um, the Charge Youth Camp is still going to take place. Uh, we'll need to hear from Joel about that. Now, Joel was supposed to text me or email me about the Bible Bowl. I j it just came to memory, and he may have, and I just didn't get the email yet or I didn't see it. But uh, we have the Bible Bowl questions. I'll be getting those out very soon. So you can have those uh, next week. We'll have some of the questions printed out for everyone to be able to pick up next week. All right. I think that is all of the announcements that I have for now. And uh, Brother Jerry's going to lead us in singing in just a moment. Let's begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, holy and reverent is your name. We give you thanks this day, Father, for the blessings of life for the beautiful weather today, for the health that we do have, for the air that we breathe. And we pray, Father, that you would continue to watch over and bless each of us. Father, may your will be done always in our lives. We ask, Father, forgiveness of our sins. And, Father, that you would strengthen us to forgive others. We pray, Father, that you would help us to grow in our faith and knowledge and understanding of your Son and of your will uh, through your Word, and that we would allow it to guide us, Father, that we may not be led into temptation. We're so grateful for your, your concern, love, mercy, and grace that is shown daily in our lives. And we pray, Father, for vision to see it, for the, the courage as well to act upon the doors that you open before us. We're so very thankful, Father, for the opportunity to remember the sacrifice that your son Jesus made on the cross for our sins. We pray, Father, that every accountable soul on this planet would come to understand it, recognize it, and obey it. Obey that plan that you have set forth in our lives. We see your grace, and we pray, Father, for faith that others may come to believe and to repent of their sins and come in humble obedience to obey your Son, Father. There may be some even listening this morning at that point in their lives. We pray, Father, that you would give them the strength and the courage to obey we love you so much, Father. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I will remind uh, 10 of us in the audience that uh, we need to get your songbooks out. Those that are watching the live stream, uh, the words and the music, if we have it, will be on the PowerPoint. First song this morning, 215, 215, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through 
light has been my guide. Heavenly peace, divine is comfort. Here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, tears each winding path I tread. Kiss me great for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed in mortal wings is fly to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Though my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. The song before the contribution is 175, 175, of the depths and the riches. After this song, we'll have the contribution. Oh, the depth and the riches of God's saving grace flowing down from the cross for me. There the debt for my sins by my Savior was paid in his suffering on Calvary. Oh, the depth of such wonderful love flowing boundless and full and free. And the debt for my sins was all paid in his suffering on Calvary. How my heart humbly bows in his presence today when I think of his agony. By his stripes I am freed from the bondage of sin through his suffering on Calvary. Oh, the depth of such wonderful love flowing boundless and full and free. And the debt for my sins was all paid in his suffering on Calvary. Oh, what marvelous mercy, what infinite love, what immeasurable grace I see. By his blood I am cleansed, I am happy and free through his suffering on Calvary. Oh, the depth of such wonderful love, flowing boundless and full and free. And the debt for my sins was all paid in his suffering on Calvary. Upon the first day of the week, we are commanded to partake or to take up, rather, a collection uh, that we may help those in need uh, and that we may uh, have funds to be able to spread the gospel. Now, uh, we read of this in 1 Corinthians 16 where Paul instructed 
the church in Corinth to take up this collection that he instructed the churches in Galatia to do as well. And these funds were used to help support poor saints that were in Jerusalem uh, at that time. And we also see in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, the church here, I'm going to begin at verse 1. Um, the churches of Macedonia. It says, We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed into, or in a wealth of generosity on their part, for they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints, and this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. What a wonderful thing to be recorded about, uh, brethren. And I, I wonder uh, if we could have the same thing recorded or said about our giving. Is our giving that generous? Are we giving back to the Lord in such a manner that that this sort of thing could be said? I think I can think back to times in my life whenever I was thinking about my contribution and thinking about selfish things, about how if I had that money, I could do other things with it. But in whenever we really step back and we take a perspective of eternity, when we think about eternity and those things that we'd like to spend money on, instead of considering the worth of a soul. What is a soul worth? If we gain all the world's money and wealth and lose our soul, what have we truly gained in the end but heartache and misery and now an, and an eternity of, of, of suffering? But think about what we can do with such funds to help those that are in need, but also to spread the gospel to the world. I want us to think about those things as we pray for this, this collection. Our Father, our God in heaven, holy is your name. Father, we give you thanks for what we have, the blessings that we have, and and we pray, Father, for those that are struggling right now uh, with, with their job situations and with funds. We pray that you would bless them, Father. Allow us as a congregation to be able to help those that are in need. We pray now, Father, that that you would bless the, the gift that we have searched our hearts to deliver, and we pray that it will be done in an acceptable manner. In Christ's name, amen. The song before the Lord's Supper is number 176, 176, same opening. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He, so. he gave his precious life for me, for me. Because he loved me so. <clears throat> Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. 
Precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go, and reign with him through endless days, because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He, so. he gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. <clears throat> As we uh, set our minds to remember the death of our Savior on the cross, I'd invite you to look with me at John chapter 19. John chapter 19, beginning at verse 16, as we read the death, about the death of Christ. We've read from Matthew, Mark, and Luke now, moving on to, to John as we prepare our minds to partake of the Lord's Supper. Read with me. Um, so he delivered him over to, to them to be crucified. And so they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place of a skull, which is in Aramaic, is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. And Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the inscription for the pl place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic and Latin and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece, from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And so the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and Mary and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Would you bow with me? Our great God in heaven, we are humbled by what we've just read and what we know about what your son did for us and what he gave up for us and the willingness and love that he showed forth that day to offer his life for us and to offer his life in obedience to you. And we give you thanks for this as we 
Think of his innocent body that was offered on the cross for our sin, his sinless body. We pray that we would take of this emblem that he set forth, this unleavened bread, in a way that would please you and in a way that would help us to keep ever in the forefront of our minds what Jesus did for us. In Christ's name, amen. I believe that was the end of where my uh, slides with the scripture reading uh, go to, but I'd like to read a few more verses if you'll follow along with me. It's verse 31. Since it was the day of preparation and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. And so the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe for these things took place, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones was, will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will take on him whom they have pierced. Bow with me. Father, it is uh, a humbling experience to read about what Jesus did for us and to read of all of the scriptures that he fulfilled in his life and in his death. And as we think about that blood that came forth from his body, we pray, Father, that uh, we would partake of this fruit of the vine that is an emblem of that blood that was shed for us and that it may remind us as we commune in this, in this supper, remind us of all that's been done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The invitation song will be number 553, 553. The song before the lesson, 201, 201. Each step I take, my Savior goes before me, and with his loving hand, he leads the way. And with each breath, I whisper, I adore thee. Oh, what joy to walk with him each day. Each step I take, I know that he will guide me to higher ground. He ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken. Each step I take just leads me closer home. 
At times I feel my faith begin to waver When up ahead I see a chasm wide It's then I turn and look up to my Savior I am strong when He is by my side Each step I take I know that He will guide me to higher ground he ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken each step i take just leads me closer home i trust in god no matter come what may for life eternal is in his hand he holds the key that opens up the way that will lead me to the promised land each step i take i know that he will guide me to higher ground he ever leads me on until someday the last step will be taken each step i take just leads me closer home I have a few things to announce again before I forget. Uh, Joel let me know that the Bible Bowl questions will be emailed to all of those who are participating tomorrow. Also, uh, Taryn Boone has requested prayers for her father who is sick and has fever. He's in Texas and they're waiting on his uh, COVID-19 test. Also, Amanda's grandmother had her back surgery last week and is at home recovering from that. Please remember her in your prayers. And Ms. Alma says that the bulletin for this week is available at the website. So if you've been missing out on uh, having the bulletin, you can go to our website and find it there on our, our webpage. All right. So what did you get your mom for Mother's Day. Uh, there are a lot of gifts being given this morning. Uh, sometimes it's, it's flowers. Um, sometimes it's candy or, uh, you know, uh, the, the typical gifts are, are, are uh, things of this nature. Uh, small gifts. Some are... are, are more expensive and, and larger gifts. But these Mother's Day gifts, uh, some, sometimes it's even just a card or a phone call expressing our affection to our, our mothers on this, this day. Mother's Day is a, is a U.S. holiday, uh, and, and I, I've told you about the story of, of when it began. I'll tell you about it again in just a moment, but... I want us to think about what it is that we are giving our mothers today. And if you're watching from home this morning, I do have a title slide that says Mother's Day. And, and it says here, uh, you know, what did you get for your mother? Uh, that's the only slide, so don't be waiting for it to change and only thinking about when's the slide going to change? When's the, it's not going to. That's it. <laughs> I just wanted us to be thinking on that one point this morning. What are we giving our mothers? And you know what it made me think of? It made me think of that song where we, we sing about um, what, are we, what are we bringing for Jesus? You know, what, look at what he's done for us. What are we doing for him? And we we can think along those lines that while our, our mothers are not, uh, not the Lord, we can think of all that they've done in our lives. And I recognize that uh, not all of us have had the best mothers. Um, some of us maybe have had uh, no mother at all, raised only by our fathers. Uh, 
And in, in that case, there's someone in our lives that we can relate this lesson to, I pray. So how about it? What did you get for your mother for Mother's Day? And if you're a young person at home or sitting in this very room this morning, as my kids are, thinking, well, I don't have money. How can I go out and buy something from home? Well, you don't have to buy the things that we're going to talk about this morning. Because, well, I don't want to give it away. Let's move on to our first point, the origin. The really the, the where did all of this begin? Because it, it's not really that old. It's only about 100 years old this holiday. Uh, there was a lady. Her name was uh, Anna Jarvis, and it, it was back in 1907 that her mother had passed away, and, and this had been uh, her mother had passed away a couple of years before this, and she wanted some kind of way to to remember her mother, but also to just honor her and so she began promoting the idea of having some sort of recognized day where we uh, we build up mothers where we honor honor our mothers and so it was three years later that in West Virginia that being the very first state to have this as a holiday they celebrated that day as a holiday to honor mothers and it wasn't long after that, actually the very next year, that all of the states began to celebrate Mother's Day as a national holiday. Just a few years later, in 1914, uh, President Woodrow Wilson officially proclaimed Mother's Day as the second Sunday in May. So we began celebrating that Sunday as a, a national holiday to honor mothers, to remember all that they have done for us. It didn't take uh, long, though, for her to be, Miss Jarvis, to be very disappointed in her holiday because it soon became like almost every other holiday commercialized. Uh, it wasn't even a, but a couple of years later that, that people were using that holiday to sell flowers to raise money for a, a good cause. But she saw it as commercializing the holiday and well, we see that we see that a lot in our our society as well instead of that sentiment uh, for uh, respect from mothers it became in her eyes miss Jarvis eyes, a holiday of profit and too many um, uh, today many uh, of our mothers have have received gifts um, and maybe you've even given gifts uh, to other mothers that are not your own mother. I know that my wife has, uh, over the weekend, received a couple of gifts from people that were not her mother at all. They're just friends that want to say, we respect you, we honor you, and we recognize all that you've done in, in, in uh, being a mother and raising your children. I want us to focus now turn what well, you know we're here because we're here to worship god we're here to recognize all of god's will for our lives so what is god's will for our lives in regard to our mothers what is it that god expects us to give to our mothers let's start first in Ephesians chapter 6, and you probably could have guessed that that's where I would like to start. So I hope that if you have your Bible this morning, maybe your Bible is, and you brought it with you in a, a little zipper case, or maybe it's in a little orange tote bag. Uh, but if you have your Bible with you, get it out now. <laughs> and let's read in Ephesians chapter 6, Verse 1, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, obey your parents. This is right. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. We're expected by God then to obey our parents. I want us to recognize something too. If we, uh, throughout each one of these points, if we struggle to show obedience to our mothers, how can we obey God? 
You see, as we, because God has here proclaimed that through his inspired apostle Paul that we are to obey our parents, and when we don't obey our parents, we don't obey God. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul also wrote, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Now, you have to remember, think about it. This is the church in Colossae. Paul has written them a letter. The letter has arrived at the church in Colossae, and someone is standing before the congregation reading this letter. And as they're reading this letter, there are old, and there are young, and there are in between. There are mothers, there are fathers, there are children, there are grandparents, there are grandchildren. All of these people are here in this congregation, and the person is reading this letter aloud, and he gets to verse 20. There weren't any verses, but there are now. But he gets to this, this sentence, and it says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. So he's not just... Sometimes we think about these letters that are written to the, the church, and we think, well... You know, this is just written to those the adults. But here, this specifically was written to the young. Obey your parents. This is pleasing to the Lord. You know what the opposite of that is then, right? <laughs> it's unpleasing to God when we disobey our parents. Solomon told his son in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, Hear, my son, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teaching. Forsake not your mother's teaching. You could go on and read more about what Solomon said there, but the point is we need to obey our mothers. And this is something that we can give them, not only today on Mother's Day, but every day. And as we obey our mothers... We obey the Lord. Even Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 51, we see him continuing in his obedience to his mother and his father. So do we, do, do you, do we all obey our mothers? When we're in the home, when we're growing up, young people, are you obeying? Your mothers. Number two, let's move on to the rest of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. And we'll read verse 2 now. So verse 1 said, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now number two says, Honor your father and your mother. Honor them. Honor them. Why? What does he, he goes on to say more. This is the first commandment with the promise. What's he talking about? This is the first commandment with a promise. Well, in order to understand this, we need to go back to the Old Testament. We need to go to Exodus 20, to the Ten Commandments. And in verse 12, we read, Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not, shall not bear false witness. Notice all of these sins that come after obey your parents. Honor your father and your mother. Why is this at the top of the list? Why is this above these others? Thou shalt not. Well, this isn't a thou shalt not, is it? It is a thou shalt. Here's what you should do. You need to honor your father and your mother. Why? Because if I can't honor my father and mother, I can't honor my heavenly father who's commanded me to honor my earthly. Solomon warned also in Proverbs 20, verse 20, if, uh, if one curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. There are grave consequences to living a life that is disrespectful to one's parents. And I have to tell you, as I, I, I see it regularly, 
children and parents interacting with one another, mothers and, and sons and daughters interacting with one another, and a mother telling the child to do something, and the child does the exact opposite. Disobedient, disrespectful. And yes, there is uh, a part of this that is our responsibility, mothers and fathers, because children that are trained to obey or taught to obey their fathers and their mothers will have it much easier doing so or obeying their heavenly father. We do our children a disservice not teaching them how important it is to obey their father and their mothers. Number three. I want us to turn all the way to the Old Testament for this one, to 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. Elisha is getting ready to follow Elijah for a while and it says in, in verse 19, read with me, of chapter 19, so he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shophat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen in front of him and he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again for what I have, for what have I done to you. What's the point? Elijah, Elisha here is, is showing affection for his mother showing affection for his mother and his father. He knows his, his life is, is, is about to take a, a, a big turn. He has a huge responsibility. Elijah the prophet, arguably the greatest prophet before Christ, has just come and laid his mantle, his cloak, upon the back, the shoulders of Elijah. Elisha, excuse me. What a huge responsibility now. And Elisha says, let me go and kiss my father and mother before we go. And Elijah, Elijah says, go ahead. He's showing them that affection that they deserve. Um, why shouldn't we be able to, to show that kind of affection, to tell our mothers that we love them, to show them affection by the way that we conduct our lives, by the way that we honor and respect them. Look at all that they have done for us. Don't they deserve our affection? Another gift that we can give to our mothers besides that affection and honor and obedience is one that uh, might seem, I don't know, um, a given, but let's use our, our heads. Let's, let's think before we act. Let's use a little wisdom instead of just acting impulsively. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, Solomon writes, A wise man makes a glad father, but a foolish son is an arrow, or is, is sorrow, rather, uh, to his mother. A foolish son is sorrow to his mother. Yes, that's, that's it. Proverbs 17, verse 25, A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. Foolishness. Our parents, our mothers, want to be proud of us. But when we act foolishly, when we don't think, when we don't use our brains and our common sense, and we go off and we do things that are ridiculous, when we do things that, that are sinful or unwise, we make our parents, particularly here, we're talking about mothers, our mothers saddened. 
we increase their uh, their grief, their worry, when we should be doing the opposite. We should be, as Jesus in Luke chapter 2, I referred to earlier, verse 51, but in verse 52, it says Jesus grew in what? Wisdom and knowledge. It's so important that we grow in these areas and we'll make our parents, our mothers, uh, so happy if we use our brains. Mothers have enough to worry about about the welfare of their children. They shouldn't have to worry unnecessarily. And so let's use our brains. Let's give our mothers the, the gift of us using the wisdom that she has taught us. And then number five, Proverbs 23, verses 24 and 25 say this, The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. The same could be said of a mother, of any parent. When, when our children, we pray for this. I pray for this every day. Listen up, kids. I pray for this all the time, that you will grow up to be righteous in the sight of God. I pray for your faith, and I pray that you will find someone that will help you to be faithful. Righteous children are a, a boon to their parents. They are a blessed gift. Nothing could make a mother prouder than a righteous child. Today, though true righteousness comes through following Jesus, in Romans chapter 3, verse 21, it says, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus who put God, who God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance He passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness at the present time so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. We need this righteousness and this righteousness is found in Jesus. It is found in Jesus. Are you giving your mother the gift of living a life that is righteous before God? And then finally, as we finish up this morning, the last gift I want us to consider giving, or rather that the Scriptures show us that we should be giving to our mothers, is concern, is, is care, is, is that love? First Timothy chapter four, five, verse four, excuse me. First Timothy chapter five, verse four says, "But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. Look at verse eight of the same passage, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than a non-believer or unbeliever. Look at verse 16 now. If any believing woman has relatives who are widows, let her care for them. Let the church not be burdened so that it may care for those who are truly Widows. James says in James chapter 1, verse 27, that true religion undefiled before God is to do what? To visit, to care for the fatherless and the widows. Mothers, especially mothers who are widowed, deserve our attention. 
deserve our care, certainly do not deserve to be put into the care of someone else without us helping at all. They deserve the best attention that we can give them, the best that we can afford them. I recognize there are some situations that are, are different from others, but we should do everything in our power and in our uh, financial means to care for our mothers. Look what they've given to us. What should we be giving to them? Let me ask this. What do they deserve? What do they deserve? Uh, you may choose to give your mother all of these gifts, and maybe you did give them a card or some flowers or some candy today, or maybe a phone call telling, expressing that affection but every day we need to give them what the scriptures, what our God has commanded us to give them in obeying them as our parents and respecting and honoring them, telling them, telling her, Mom, I love you, and I recognize all that you've done for me, and I appreciate so much you raising me in the Lord. And although I did not always live it, because it was there, it helped me to be able to come back to it, to that faith. I didn't always use my wisdom, <laughs> but because it was taught to me, it was there in reserve, and I was able to find it again. To live that righteous life that God commands us to do so that we can bring that, power, that, that, that peace of mind to our parents and let us care for them. Are we participating in this true, pure, undefiled religion before God? James 1, verse 27. If not, we need to repent. We need to repent fervently and get right back in a right relationship with God. There may be various other reasons this morning that you need to repent. I want to encourage you. You can text me as we sing this song of invitation, and we will pray for you this morning. But if it is that, that you have yet to obey the gospel, and you wish to obey the gospel today, uh, repenting of your sins, confessing your faith before others that Jesus is the Son of God, and being immersed in water for the remission of your sins, we can ha make that happen today. If we can help you with anything, I want to encourage you to make that need known we're going to all stand together here and, and sing this song. I encourage you to do the same at home. And let's glorify and praise God. If we can help you, let us know as we stand and sing. Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know, my Jesus, do you know, my friend? Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide till the end? Where is your heart, O pilgrim? What does your light reveal? Who is your call for comfort when naught but sorrow you feel? Do you know, my Jesus? Do you know, my friend? Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide till the end? Who knows your distance? 
appointment. Who hears each time you cry? Who understands your heartache? Who dries the tears from your eyes? Do you know, my Jesus? Do you know, my friend? Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide to the We will have a closing song before the prayer this morning, number 488, 488. From a personal note, I'm really looking forward for us, as many as can, be together next Sunday. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? And in the troubles and cares for the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burden to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ the supernal one, won't it be wonderful there? Raising, adoring the matchless eternal one, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burden to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful there? There with the tempest will never be sweeping us. Won't it be wonderful there? Sure that forever the Lord will be keeping us. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? just have one prayer request while anthony is coming forward to lead us in this closing prayer and that is uh uh, uh well megan lagrange uh contacted me today her son is her son aaron is in uh boot camp and some of you already know this have been praying for him he has contacted his mother today to say that uh, he was able to to watch some of the service this morning but had to go and wanted to thank everyone for the prayers and request prayers from those maybe who did not know so we'll, we'll certainly be praying for aaron uh in the the coming days uh, anthony come and lead us in that prayer Dear Father God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you for letting us come here today, Lord, to spread your word even though we cannot be together. We ask that you help us to remember those that have cared for us, our mothers that have brought us joy and life to us. And we ask that you keep us healthy and strong the next time we come to meet here, Lord, and that we all are able to partake in your word that what is taught is taught in spirit and in truth, and it is pleasing in your sight, Lord. We ask that while we do meet, that we are kept in safety, and that we are free from sickness, and that those that are ill are kept safe and will recover. We thank you for everything that you have given us, Lord, and in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>